There exists a certain type problem that I call the disease problem. We need the name of a disease. You know, some airlines are charging a lot for checked bags, so let's suppose people have developed bagitis. Yeah, that's it. Some worry so much about bagitis, they develop bags under their eyes. And the airlines charge for those as well. One catches bagitis at the airport, so it is a terminal disease, and if you marry someone with it, well, look out, that the relationship's going to come with a lot of extra baggage. But one must learn to carry on. Carry on because the airlines charge less for carry-ons. But all we really need to know is that 4% of people have bagitis. And there's a blood test for this disease. Those who actually have bagitis test positive for the disease 98% of the time. Those without the disease have a false positive result 5% of the time. So if one person is randomly selected and that person tested positive for the disease, find the probability that the person does not have bagitis. One should recognize that testing positive is not independent of having the disease. If they were independent, there would be no reason to run the blood test. Because testing positive depends upon having the disease or not, it's nice to set up a tree diagram that begins with the base rates of having or not having the disease. This allows a logical place to record each probability for testing positive. If one has the disease, there's a 98% chance of testing positive. If one doesn't have the disease, there's a 5% chance of testing positive. Here's our conditional probability formula. The numerator must be the probability of not having the disease and testing positive. We multiply 0.96 times 0.05 and get 0.048. Note that we are not multiplying by the overall rate of testing positive, and this is why multiplication is appropriate here, regardless of whether we look at this as two observations or one. The denominator is the overall probability of testing positive. There's two ways to test positive. We just calculated testing positive if a person does not have the disease. We now need to multiply the probability of testing positive when one does have the disease, 0.98 times 0.04. Adding both probabilities for testing positive yields an overall 0.0872 probability of testing positive. Our conditional probability then of not having the disease despite testing positive is 0.550. By the way, we do not have to use the conditional probability formula to calculate this probability. We could shrink the sample space from 100% down to just the 0.0872 possibility of testing positive, and then divide the portion of that involving a person who does not have the disease, and we get the same answer. And one more important point. We are doing Bayesian probability without the formal Bayesian approach. What I'm striving for is visual understanding and overall understanding. I may in the future make a sister video to this and connect to the Bayesian formulas.